second reading. This bill is set down for committee stage next sitting day. Call on Government Order of the Day number two. Student Loan Scheme Amendment Bill number three, second reading. Speaker. Uh, the Honourable Pasetta Sam Lutawinga. Mr Speaker, I move that the Student Loan Scheme Amendment Bill number three be now read a second time. Sir, this bill continues the Government's focus on providing proper governance and oversight of the Student Loan Scheme. Part of that means ensuring that borrowers are aware of their obligations to repay their tax-funded loans and that they honour those obligations. I'm pleased, sir, to say that most borrowers do accept their responsibilities and that they should have no concerns about the principal measure proposed in this bill. This measure is targeted exclusively at a relatively small number of overseas-based borrowers who in spite of Inland Revenue's best efforts to encourage their compliance, persistently ignore their responsibilities when it is clear they have the ability to repay their loan. This bill proposes to give Inland Revenue greater powers to deal with these individuals, including allowing Inland Revenue to request an arrest warrant when the borrower attempts to leave the country after visiting New Zealand. This action would only be taken when dealing with the most serious cases of non-compliance, when all other efforts by inland revenue to persuade the borrower to make repayments have failed, and only when borrowers can clearly afford to make those repayments. This is the principal proposal in the bill. The second major proposal, sir, will bring overseas-based borrowers' repayment obligations more into line with their New Zealand-based counterparts. Under the current rules, an overseas-based borrower's repayment obligation is based on their uh, loan balance. For New Zealand-based borrowers, however, their repayment levels are based on their level of income. So this means the repayment obligation for an overseas-based borrower decreases as the person's loan balance falls, while a New Zealand-based borrower's repayment increases as their personal income rises. In the interests of greater fairness, the bill proposes a fixed repayment obligation for overseas-based borrowers based on their loan balance. Sir, overseas borrowers with loan balances over $45,000 will also have their repayment rates increased. And this, sir, will speed up loan repayments for these borrowers and reduce the amount of interest they will ultimately pay, or they will ultimately have to pay on their loans. In bringing the bill to its second reading, I want to acknowledge the Finance and Expenditure Committee for its consideration of the bill, and in particular the Chair, Paul Goldsmith. I also welcome its recommendations to further improve the transparency of the offence and arrest provisions, so it is absolutely clear what types of order a district court would, could impose upon a borrower. Now, these might include, for example, ordering the borrower to pay the amount in default or to enter into an arrangement to do so, as well as providing information about their contact details, assets, income and employment status. The committee has also recommended alignment of the definition of income for student loan repayment purposes with, what, with that used for working for families tax credits. This, sir, is a very sensible efficiency measure which will align the definition with other legislation. The result will be fairer. It will result in a fairer, more cohesive and efficient student loan scheme for all those involved. Sir, I commend this bill to the House. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Mr. Uh, Speaker. I call Dr. Speaker. David Clark. Mr. Speaker.